YouTube. Boom, boom. Ladles and jelly spoons. Welcome to Truth, Love, and Peace. This is episode number 40, what did I put on here? 49, I think, 48, 49. I'm trying to keep track. Sometimes I smoke too much pot. These things happen. Joining me today, Mr. J.W. Brogan. Thank you so much for being here, dude. Oh, thank you so much for having me. The last time we sat down like this was on uh, on Joey's podcast. It was. Which, uh, much love to that dude. If you don't know Joey yes. Livingston, check yep. him out. NCG Studios, all that good stuff. This is Brogan. And um, that was that was a fun little podcast that we did. It mm-hmm. uh, wasn't the first time we met. We actually met through the back porch comedy scene, which is where we are at the Days in. Mm-hmm. Hanging out today for, uh, for what is it, back porch comedy. It's not back porch comedy tonight. That's on Tuesday nights, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, but, yeah, so that's how I got to know you, was as a stand-up comedian. But you told me a little bit about being from from somewhere other than Pensacola. Where were you before you got to the, the peak hole? Well, the, uh, the bulk of my origin story definitely takes place in Pensacola. Um, I was born in Houston. Um, then from there, I moved to Pennsylvania. From Pennsylvania, back to Houston. Uh, and then from Houston back, or well, not back, but to Pensacola to live with my aunt and uncle, and I've been there ever since. I moved to Philly for a little while, trying to pursue stand-up comedy, and as you can all see how well that went, I'm back here. Oh man, uh, I've never, I don't know anything about the comedy scene in Philly. Are there big names from Philly? I'm sure there are. Uh, yeah, you have um, Todd Glass, um, mm-hmm. Paul F. Tompkins, Kevin Hart. Uh, I want to say Del a, Rey. Yeah, oh. see, just ah, sometimes I just don't know shit. These things happen. Right. <laughs> These things happen. So, let's see. I, I kind of want to dive into the, the, the podcast, not the podcast, the, the YouTube thing that we did over at NCG Studios, because that was, that was the, the rippinest good time. That was the most we've got to sit down and chit-chat before it was, now. It was. So that's my, my best reference. Um, but I remember you singing little Louis Armstrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah? Have yeah. you always been a Louis Armstrong fan, or was that just like a one-off for the show? No, man. I've always been a Louis Armstrong really? fan. Yeah, no, I played trumpet in middle school. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay, so there you go. Um, you know, I mean, I didn't take it super seriously. I, I should have, but at the time, Louis was the only music that my music teacher exposed me to that really talked to me, I mm-hmm. guess. And... That song, I don't know, um, uh, I have a very musical family. Like mm-hmm. I said, I was raised by my aunt and uncle, and also my father in the picture. But uh, my uncle was a career musician for 33 years or something. And <laughs> uh, karaoke is a pretty big thing in our family. So one day, just messing around outside with the whole family over, uh, I chose that song, and instead of trying to do... A uh, twelve-year-old falsetto version. I decided to just go full-blown, see if I can do it, and what came out <laughs> really <laughs> it, 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 it was as close to Louis Armstrong as a twelve-year-old who was late to puberty could ever hope to reach. <laughs> I can, yeah, yeah. That's that's very accurate. That's very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Which is interesting because my natural voice, it doesn't have a very uh, deep register, you know, but if you get it deep yeah. back in there. Yeah. yeah. Drop it way down. Right. It's, yeah. That's, that's my home. I love singing the, the, the bass, bass parts, so <laughs> I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, so how long have you been doing comedy? Uh, you mentioned going to Philly mm-hmm. and being here now. Yeah, um, this, I guess I've been doing stand-up for about five years straight. Uh, the first time I ever did it, I was 14, and I did it for, you know, off and on for about two years when I was in high school. I did four years of theater and that, and I got really into that. 
and there weren't any like like venues that had open mic strictly for comedy mm. uh into the line cafe there was some like glass blowing place or whatever they had open mics for spoken word or poetry or mainly acoustic guitar playing renditions of john denver songs <laughs> uh but they couldn't tell me that what i was doing wasn't stand-up comedy right yeah but it was just another way for me to get the jitters out for my plays back at school you know another way to kind of ham it up i mean you know, anyone who does stand up, anyone who acts, there's something deep inside of us, some insecurity that we're trying to fill the void of by other people's approval. So I was getting doses of that at a very early age through stand up as much as I could. Uh, drugs and nefarious activities <laughs> um, filled in the rest <laughs> yeah, filled, filled in the rest a, uh, a slight vacation filled in a little more of the rest and I guess but I didn't get my first laugh hmm. until I came to back porch oh yeah when was that yeah that oh man that was probably sometime in April of 2000, maybe 13, perhaps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, Tony Burkett actually could probably better fill you in on that because... I'll call him. We'll get him here right now. Then. <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of an interesting story how I uh, found my way back to stand-up. Okay, so I had done meth. <laughs> For the first time in, in, all, in, in, in my entire <laughs> life. Trust me. <laughs> Kids, just trust me. There's a silver lining to every smoke cloud. So, I had tried some meth. And when I say I had tried some meth, I gave it the college try. You know? So I smoked some, I snorted some, whatever, da da da. And I was up for about four days. And on that fourth day, I had. I had heard something about there being an open mic at Back Porch. Now, <laughs> I had came up here on a Friday, completely you know, out of my mind, no sleep or anything like that, and I came up and I walk up to Tony Burkett. You see how I look now? Can you imagine how I look after a five day meth binge? <laughs> so I come up to Tony Burkett and I say, hey man, uh, Where's the sign-up sheet for the open mic? And he, very politely, he says, um, the open mics are on Tuesday. Come back on Tuesday. <laughs> and I said, no, man, you don't understand. I have to get on stage tonight. Now, he, honestly, Tony, you kind of passed the buck a little bit. Because <laughs> he tells me to go to the headliner, right? There's some headliner from Mobile, uh, maybe the governor or somebody like that. And a really good comic. Well, I go to him and I ask him, in this young comics, this is, uh, this is bad etiquette. Don't ever go to the headliner and ask him for time if you're on meth. But I did. <laughs> <laughs> and he was kind enough to give me about three and a half meth-filled minutes. <laughs> and, okay. And I went up on stage to tell, and I told the entire story about how I had been awake for four days, and I guess everybody thought it was like an avant-garde piece, and didn't really believe that I had been on meth like that. And you pulled an unintentional Kaufman. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That. Yeah. No. I was. I was Tony Clifton at that point. Just. Yeah. <laughs> but and. Um, it all worked out in Pensacola, Florida, five years later. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Kids, there are better ways to become a comic. <laughs> but, but, don't... That's an awesome story, though, man. That's Because how many people can say that, that the end of their first ever meth bender ended in being a comic? Artie Because that's kind of a vision. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think even Artie's got that story. <laughs> that is definitely an original. <laughs> Good on you. Wow. I'm afraid my heart would explode. I'm too old to do math. Oh, thanks. 
I got enough dental issues. Just smoked for too long. Yeah, well, mm. I, yeah, yeah, you probably shouldn't try it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to advocate. <laughs> What did Hunter S. Thompson say? I wouldn't advocate drugs and alcohol to anybody else. But it worked pretty well for me. It worked pretty well for me. Fuck yeah, man. That's, that's great. That's that's great. I um, Now I'm a little jealous. I don't have a triumphal entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of... Smutched my way in. Holy shit. The chariots of fire. I mean, that's, that's awesome. That's like the worst... G.G. Allen comedian story ever. <laughs> and then I got pissed on by a heckler. <laughs> That's awesome. Funny uh, story about getting no. I was gonna say that I think the only way that story is better is if that heckler that pissed on you had actually been Doug Stanhope. Oh man, because like, of all the comics, he would be the one. <laughs> <laughs> Doug Stanhope, if you're listening. I don't give you permission to pee on the man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. I mean, I really, I really want the, 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 draw the line yeah, somewhere. Yeah, man. I, I don't need the IG followers that bad. <laughs> That's great. Oh man. But yeah, the back porch comedy is fucking awesome. I, I didn't know that that you had had gotten your official start here. That's something else we have in common. Then. Mm. That's awesome. Man, this is such a healthy community yeah, that. Yeah. You know, I mean, I would hate to name names, but so many people have helped build. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, tons and tons. Sitting several people who you know have kind of faded away, and you know we miss them. You know, we miss Gar. You know, I mean, he was a big. I've only ever heard stories. He was he was a big part of you know up here uh, starting the whole thing. You know, we got Bubs Harris, we got. Tony Burkett, Jason Switzer. I mean, we got the first show I was on was the uh, Bubs has that uh, feed and shelter the homeless thing. That yeah, he's yeah, doing fuck over at yeah, 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 fuck, fuck yeah, fest. man. So that was the first bill I was ever I was ever on. Olivia Search, I mean, you know, I mean, dude, we've we, we've got people who actually care, and that's rare in a small scene in a small community where we're all trying to break into a very competitive industry. Fuck yeah, you know. Yeah, I have been been racking my brain about uh, ways to 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 make that happen. Um, mm. You know, one of the, one of the ways this whole thing started was how can I help my friends spread the message? You know, spread the word. Right. And uh, and that's kind of how this whole podcast came to be, which um, which I fucking love doing. So I love hearing stories about what other people have been doing, mm -hmm. so we can find ways to build on that. Right. right. What. Do you remember anything that, that crushed that that isn't going on now from what's been going on in the Pensacola scene? <clears throat> like positive things have gone away? Well yeah, like what's what's some fun that hadn't been done in a while that, that could be revisited? Like one of the things I've thought about doing is uh, doing roasts. That, uh, yeah, no, like I don't absolutely. I don't know. Obviously, I don't know shit about it. That's why when we put together Stinger's comedy out there on the, on the key, mm -hmm. I rely on Emily. You know, she's been sure. around for a long time. She's sure, been doing sure. it. And um, so I just, I love being the new guy that can just be like, what about this? Right. What about that? Right. Right. I don't know. We haven't, I haven't tried any of this shit yet. But I'm always curious about what, what has worked, what does work. And I love looking and seeing what other people are doing and finding ways to, you know, like, that looks like a good time. How can we do that? Um, <clears throat> roast battles. Like, what does that look like? Okay, so um, roast battles are pretty interesting. That is, it's a it's an elimination contest. Okay, crowd okay. Ju crowd judged. All okay. right, you have a it's it's a bracket system. So you have a certain number of comedians, whatever. Uh, me and Olivia go at each other. She hits me with some really good. I'm tall, but still have little dick jokes. So boom, she eliminates me. Right? She moves on to the next round. Now we got Bubs Harris versus Graham, and Graham talks about Bubs' shitty tattoos. Boom, Graham moves to the next, and now it's Graham versus Olivia, and all right, the way right. until you have boom. Ah. Okay. Now I'm not sure if I stole that idea. From uh, the governor, or what? What is that that goes on? Um, they've got a belt for it and everything. Um, Wiley mm. was versus the governor. I think it, they do it at a mobile, maybe. I 
don't know if they still do one in Mobile. The last one that we had come through, I can't remember the gentleman's name, but his Facebook page, he's got a got a belt on, and uh, I want to say it's it's in Florida. It's down Fort Walton, okay. like oh did, further down Tallahassee way, maybe something like that. Did Drew Wayne was he one of the originators of that? I'm not sure. He probably know better than I would. Hmm. It sounds fun, though. I mean, well, there are only so many new things under the sun. So, exactly. you know, the exactly. idea, find ways to make it your own, for sure. And we give credit start- where credit's due, and then have a good time. Fuck it. Right. We could start an improv troupe. Man, <laughs> I don't know. I'm no good at improv. Isn't somebody doing that already? Yeah, we've got Improbable Cause. Very, very talented bunch, by the way. Yeah, I um, need to come learn some shit. Where does that go on? That goes on. I need to come the, learn some shit. From at now. the Pensacola Little Theater, and I've actually taken classes there. Where uh, is the improv. Pensacola Little Theater? This came up recently. Um, it's like right across the street from, I think, Atlas and the Fish House, maybe? Yeah. So kind of on the way towards the beach from here? Um, from Pensacola downtown? Are you familiar with Joe Patty's? Yes. Okay, so... You're at Joe Patty's, and you're driving down, and the water is on your right. Yeah. All right. It's eventually going to be on your left. You're right going to you're, you're see it. Cool. Yeah. I and it, you. it's a white kind of stone building with banners, and it says Pensacola yeah. Theater and all that. Yeah. Cool. For those of you that don't live in the Pensacola area, that's kind of at the top of Pensacola Bay, somewhere <laughs> between Pensacola downtown proper and on your way out to the naval base. Man. <laughs> This is going to be a horrible podcast. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no. That's, that's exactly why people tune in, is to get ridiculously inaccurate geographic references. Well, uh, perfect, because I got those in spades. Excellent. The Pensacola Little Theater, though. Uh, we should mm-hmm. definitely look that up, because uh, I'm, I would like to see more theaters around. Is there anybody else that does little theaters like that in Pensacola? Uh, the one in Milton burned down. Well, tell me about the classes that you took out there. You, you, they do not just theater stuff, but they do classes during the week, too? What I've, kind of classes? I've, I've, um, I've only done improv, but yeah. they also do, like, ballet and stuff. I'm not sure if they do. Okay. I'm not sure if they do any, like, pure, like, Stanislavski-style acting. You've been there, like, twice. How are you not their PR rep, Brogan? Well, what the fuck? Well, you know, I, I, I wasn't prepped. <laughs> That's quite all right. Ben's called a little theater, though. I'm I, glad you mentioned it because uh, I'll tag it and we'll get everybody information, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But that's cool because I've... I've talked to a lot of people about, you know, there used to be comedy clubs in Pensacola, and you probably know this better than I do, but there was a, a comedy club once mm-hmm. upon a time in Pensacola and Mobile. I've, I've, I have heard um, legend yeah. of a comedy club that was in Mobile. And I'm a dreamer. I want there to be another one. There should, there, there should be a dedicated comedy club. Oh, I want that. Now, all right, and... Tell me your dreams, Brogan. <laughs> To have enough money to stop pursuing my dream of stand-up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that through stand-up comedy? <laughs> that could be through voiceover Mucinex commercials. Boy. I don't care. I'm selling out the first chance I get. Anybody out there need me to represent anything at all. I'll have my hand tattoos lasered off. That was a bad... T- <laughs> <laughs> you can catch... You can catch Brogan's Patreon page. <laughs> He'll do whatever you want. You guys on LinkedIn? <laughs> He's got PayPal. <laughs> anything, anything you need. An open guitar case. <clears throat> we got it. Oh, yeah, man, that'd be um, that'd be cool to have a dedicated comedy club in Pensacola, though. That would be nice, and I hate to be the. You know the pessimist or whatever, but I'm. I don't know that we could really sustain one just yet. Why do you think that is? Tell me about that. I'm curious. We have the talent. Yeah, that's obvious. I've seen that. I, I see it every time I come out. Whether it's an open mic, whether it's a paid show, where there's a traveling comic, whatever it is. You know, a theme. You know, like the drag night. Whatever it is, there is an incredible amount of talent. I don't know if it's if it's lack of um, PR, if um, whoever, if, if it's like if we could promote better or something, but it just doesn't feel like the majority of the town is 
not even not necessarily on board, it kind of feels like they don't know who we are and what we're about. Be- we have big enough things to draw crowds. Look at the Crawfish Festival. Like, that draws thousands of people, you know? So they, there are people in Pensacola, in Fort Walton, in, in the outlying areas, you know, who we, we have a large enough... Um, population to sustain a comedy club, but we need to convert them from being the population to being our demographic. Gotcha. That's what needs to happen. Yeah, and you tossed out some good ideas in there. You know, I think I think marketing helps if it's done right. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the the only real valuable kind of marketing is word of mouth. And I find yeah. my biggest shortcoming is yeah. I don't get out. I don't get out to things that aren't comedy enough and talk about comedy. I don't do enough proselytizing mm. for I'll, the comedy scene. All I do is skateboard and mountain bike. <laughs> well, that's still, it. Still, that's, uh, at least you're outdoors. <laughs> you might run into someone occasionally. I don't even make that's, it that far. <laughs> Quit stealing my thunder, Brogan. <laughs> Every now and then, one of my skater homies might sober up enough to waddle in downstairs here. <laughs> that's a win! <laughs> It's a win. I wonder about what it takes to build that scene, though. You know, I'm, I've been asking that question of a lot of people because I, I don't know what the formula is, I, but I think it's, it's to be found. Sooner or later, it's got to happen, right? You just keep banging, banging, banging. See, I, I think the question could at least be pondered as far as think about it like the which came first, the chicken or the egg, any big city, which came first, the the good scene or the big celebrity? Because we don't have any celebrities who have come out of the Gulf Coast region. And as far as comedy is concerned, we do have you know comedians who have made it big in pop culture from Florida, Todd Berry, Brian Regan. Mm-hmm. But we don't have anybody necessarily from our location who's still in our location. You know what I mean? We haven't had that one breakout star yet. Not for lack of talent. But I'm not sure for lack of what. But mm. I think that if we actually had that, if one of our bigger names got out there, Andrew Ferrara, you know, maybe Olivia Serche or Bubs Harris, uh, the governor, you know, um, maybe if one of the people who have bigger social media presence were to at some point blow up, then that would put us on the map, you know. Yeah. I've heard somebody else put it in similar terms. I, I can see where you're coming from. That That is a, a, a valid, a real valid solution. So until then, and, and how many famous people do you know? Let's just get them to come here. Oh, man, let's see. Uh, <laughs> if only they were that simple, right? Yeah, yeah. They're not really returning my phone calls. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, just want to borrow a little cash, man. Just enough to retire on. Shit. Yeah. Stop doing this... Bullshit comedy. I've, I've, I'm always curious about how the how social media plays into being helpful. You know, um, and I was listening to Chris Delia talk about um, how when he started his podcast, it was kind of like not wanting to leave money on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, but then how having a YouTube channel plays into growing a brand and not just reinforcing a brand. Right. And and so I'm. I'm I don't know if you saw that video. We got a, a cool little video straight off the GoPro of Ryan uh, Ryan Pfeiffer mm-hmm. um, exchange with a heckler. That was really really amusing, and um, and so just having stuff like that, just having content to put on social media, I think is helpful. But I struggle to figure out what comedy content deserves to be on social media because it's a real fine line between giving away the milk mm-hmm. and the cow. And putting out something that's funny and entertaining. All right, um, I think there's there's two lines of thought to that, and it's gonna once again sound kind of cynical coming from me. I'm a cynical person. I'm a comedian. You're but, allowed to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I think controversy sells. You sure. know what I mean. So mm-hmm. with Ryan getting into an altercation with a crowd member, obviously that's gonna get some hits. And the same, big uproarious laughter. I've, I've found that in stand-up, 
so many people, and I'm not, and I'm not talking about anybody locally. I'm talking about the people who you see on YouTube, who their stand-up videos have like twenty thousand views, but you know, they're they're mid-tier. You know, maybe maybe they're opening for the people who open for Kevin Hart. Those level comics, you see them, and I'm I'm not sure where the. Uh, I, I'm not sure where they differentiate or, or even what they're doing different than what anybody else is doing. You know, I mean, aside from having a name to tag on to. Yeah. There's no... Like, where does it become a popularity contest? Exactly. And, yeah. and versus good material. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge question. And I don't have an answer to that one, but I think... I think there's some people that are finding a good balance. And I think I think podcast is one of the things that helps strike that balance too. Yeah. Because you get a better measure of people mm -hmm. and, and whether or not you wanna keep listening to them mm -hmm. when when you can hear like cause I was listening I mentioned the Chris Delia thing. I was listening to him on Theo Vaughn's podcast. Yeah. So ten years ago there was one. <laughs> like there maybe well ten years ago that would have put us two thousand nine, so we'll go with fifteen years ago. There was no two comedians sitting down on a podcast on YouTube. No, yeah, <laughs> like, no. So just having access to that now has done so much for, for comics careers. So so I'm I'm interested to, to see if we can find more ways to take all the things that people are doing and help bring those into that digital space, but doing it responsibly. Like how do you not give away people's good shit? How do you how do you not You know, know that's such a struggle. Thing. Such a struggle because you want to get that uproarious laughter in there. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to give away anybody's good shit. <laughs> right. So, so it's, it is tricky. The altercation does help. Like you said, people love conflict. Um, do you watch any, uh, any of the comedy game show stuff? Like the Daniel Tosh kind of TV shows? Oh, or like sure. the panel yeah. TV yeah, shows? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love Tosh.0. Yeah? yeah? Has anybody ever done anything like that around here? I know Joey brought his, uh, his show, his YouTube show out. Uh, and kind of they inter intermingled it with a show here at the back porch, mm -hmm. back porch comedy one night. But oh, they haven't done where it. Where he had since. the keyboard? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had the yeah. keyboard setup. Yeah, I remember <clears throat> that. I remember that. But we, they haven't done anything like that since, and I, I would love to see that revisited. That would be really interesting. I, I, I'd like to see that too. Well, and guys like Sam Harris that go around and do live podcasts where they just they sit down and they have a they have a conversation with an audience and they do a Q and A. Yeah. Like I feel like that's that's coming back. Mm -hmm. And that's in such an old school form of entertainment to go and it's watch sure. two dudes yeah, yeah. talk. Uh -huh. Like my, the first thing that comes to mind is the Lincoln Douglas debates. I'm like who the fuck does that anymore? Yeah, yeah. But people do it all the time and, and it was shows. It's one of the reasons I got so excited when you mentioned the Pensacola Little Theater because mm -hmm. I'm I'm interested in what it takes for us to get the population of Pensacola from being a demographic, from just being a population into being a demographic. And I'm always open to suggestions. Probably, uh, I can't say probably, I kind of feel like our best bet would be for whoever is interested to band together <clears throat> and to really, really put effort towards making something collaborative, like a short film, you know what I mean? Something Dude, like that. That'd be so cool. And then that way, enter it into film festivals. We'll get national, uh, you know, national recognition, and mm -hmm. people will have heard of our scene. You know, I mean, how does any other scene get started? You know, it's people from a certain place started doing something. <laughs> Why can't the talent in Pensacola start doing something? Why can't we <laughs> band together and make some things that are worth recording, actually sit down, write it out, film it, edit it. We have the talent, we have the technology. Agreed. Agreed. Who's got stuff like that going on? I'm trying, I'm racking my brain. There's one comedy series that I've heard that's going, that's trying to get to pilot. Yeah, uh, Grant, Grant Tyson's. Uh, what's the name of it? Sean Peterson was telling me about it. Um, uh, it's, it's a Pensacola pun. It, uh, Scam County. Scam County. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> oh, and there's the another Scandia one. Uh, County. Uh, Kid, County. Kitty got a job, or Kitty gets a job. I haven't heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know too much about it, but apparently it's... Actually, I don't even want to... Yeah, talk well, you mentioned it. you mentioned film. Do you have background in film? Is that why you, I, why you mentioned film? I I do screenplays. I write screenplays, and I've directed two music videos for that a pop fucking, star that out counts. in Vegas. That and, counts. Yeah, that your film. One <laughs> two screenplays. Film, Brogan. No, 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 no. I, I write screenplays. I filmed two, and well, I did. I directed two music videos out in Vegas for a, a pop star who never got famous. Lovely lady, Ashley Elliott. Thank you so much once again for giving me that job that I did not deserve, which you found out. But one. Whoa, of the, whoa, <laughs> whoa! Back to back. Whoa, hang on. Sidetrack. Put a pin in all that bullshit. <laughs> There, who is this celebrity you are begging permission and forgiveness from that you did a music video for? Tell us, <laughs> tell us this story. We can come back to the rest. We got nothing but time. So you went out and made some pop videos with this hot celeb. Yes, pop star um, Ashley Elliott. She is a, a, a club singer, kind of Madonna style esque. Whatever you can Google her, or, you know, YouTube her or whatever. Check out the videos. Uh, you had me at Madonna. She got, you know, nominated at the ASCAP Awards. The video that I directed was played at the ASCAP Awards. Stuff Ooh, like that. fancy shit! Right, and you know, um, ASCAP's copyright for those of you who don't know. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, that was pretty much it. I did that right, uh, right, pretty much as soon as I got uh, home from vacation and. I thought that I had the world at my feet at that point. I was like, damn, dude, I'm getting flown out. I got a black card to get whatever equipment I need, you know, and then boom, do it, come back. I got my crew to edit it, blah, blah, blah. And then boom, we get flown back out to do another even more lavish one. I smoked a blunt with Coolio. Oh, what was man, that like? That was awesome. Weird. How so? Sorry, Coolio. You're fucking weird now, dude. I'm sorry, man. You are a fucking weirdo. Chill out with the hair shit. He had a fucking... <laughs> He's not a Dapper Dan man? He's not He's a Dapper nice. Dan. Dude, he... Oh, goodness. He had a baseball cap put on regular, but he had very poorly... Like, he didn't have a seamstress cut the hole out and, like, seam it back up, you know, for his... That number. Uh. But he had the hole cut out, and he had his hair sticking out. And for, like... 35 minutes straight, he kind of pestered, we had, oh, we, um, Ashley had hired, you know, one of those people who get in the giant inflatable balls, mm. you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. And, uh, we threw her in the pool, so she's, like, running around in the pool, we're filming that, or whatever, and so Coolio is just asking her, hey man, how can I get one of those? I'm trying to get one, I want to smoke a blunt in that, and just, it was just a really weird situation. Coolio's an attention whore. Clear, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> if you want to come talk about it, come on, Coolio. We'll we'll talk about it. <laughs> Compton will have you on. Uh, you're hilarious. <laughs> we'll we'll get you an inflatable ball and a blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. That's that's a great story, man. So two trips out to L.A. and um, La the, uh, Vegas. Vegas. Excuse Vegas. me. Yes. Vegas. The one with the fake uh, Eiffel Tower. Mm -hmm. um, it, but, it, but it's, it's, the fake one is way better than the real one because the fake one has a roller coaster. Yeah, and it smells better everywhere in the general oh. vicinity, from what I understand. Mm. Parisians aren't real big on baths. Mm. I'm not real big on France. Yeah, I think I think there's like Tent City under the, uh, the Eiffel Tower too. Oh. Or I could be fucking wrong. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. Um, please, friends, chime in. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, I don't, that made me lose my thought because I was worried about offending some French person that I've never seen this. <laughs> As if it matters. Who the, who the fuck is French? Jean Pierre, no. that one guy who. Um, he's been to France. I, didn't he move? He grew up here. Didn't he move to like Austria or something? No, he's here. Oh, he, is he yeah, here? yeah. He, uh, I mean, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> no. he's, he's got good French jokes. Uh, he came out to the Flying Harpoon for the open mic. Uh, oh, we, yeah? yeah, we do an open mic after the Stingers Comedy Show out there. And uh, he made the drive all the way out. Oh, wow. it, was, it was me and him, soldiering on. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, somebody has to. Yeah. No, we had, a, we had a good show early, and the crowd had two hours, and that was about all they could take. Sure. So, sure. So, yeah, we had a, had a good show. Had a great time. Um, 
but I'm still not getting back to that thought. So I'm just gonna go <laughs> go all the way back to something. I don't know. Where do we want to go? I've got so many thoughts in my head, possibility wise, current events to. I'm still hung up on this Vegas celebrity that that <laughs> Coolio is is hounding or with this blunt. Because <laughs> in my head, I want to know if your video was as good as what I got going on in my head. I bet it was, though. Uh, I the, bet it was. Did you pull a pretty okay. woman with the Amex black? Um, is is that is that the part where they do the snap thing? Yeah, when she goes back into the store and it's just like, I got money now, bitch, kiss my dick. Because uh-huh. I would have. <laughs> we'd be like, we want everything that you have that's overpriced. <laughs> No, but I, I will say this about Vegas. I, I'm a good old Southern boy. I had just gotten you know back and get flown out there. We land, whatever, da da da. She rented us an Escalade for two weeks. Right. Jeez. So, so here my dumbass is, 22 years old, smoking blunts on the strip in a fucking Escalade, and we're going. And we pull into. Uh, she lived in the only uh, condos that you can live in on the Las Vegas Strip itself, right? Okay. And there's like uh, Walgreens or CVS on the bottom floor, like any big city, you know. The kind you can't get if you're a gun owner now. Right, exactly. <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> and so we part, because we're going to go and talk about whatever, I don't even remember. But as soon as we get out, there's there's weed everywhere. Like, like I mean, it was Reggie, don't get me wrong. <laughs> But but it was just like Reggie scattered everywhere, and and as soon as we got out, like a tear, I was the Indian with the trash, like a tear just Aww. to my, but a happy tear because I just, I thought I'd made it, man. I thought the streets are littered with fucking weed. Here I am. I didn't pay anything to get. I'm getting paid to come here, and then reality came crashing down. Mm. As it usually does. And you realize that one, that one tear was just seeds and stems. Yeah. Seeds and stems. It's so sad. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But back to the video projects. Mm-hmm. Um, that would be fun, man. Uh, I would love to see some kind of... Some kind of big... Any kind of projects. I think it'd be neat. The, I want to uh, do some sketch shows. So oh yeah, effect, yeah. I can't write shit like that. So you had, you said um, you wrote a couple of screenplays. Well, how, like what kind of screenplays? How how long? Like, uh, are we well, talking like series or? Well, okay. Um, screenplay, <laughs> Rabelais. Hey, Rabelais. Listen to me, not fucking talking well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got one that's about forty five minutes long. So that's not really one worth filming and trying to enter. That's like a one act um, play though. Oh sure, no. I mean, I could re, I could potentially rework it to to format something better, but as far as writing it out, it needed to be that one, whatever. Gotcha. But um, I don't know. I write a lot of uh, five to six, maybe eight page uh, sketches. Um, me, Olivia Serge, and Andrew Ferrara. Uh, we've been getting up lately and uh, writing, doing stuff cool. like that. Very cool. Um, and then I've got another. I want to do a mockumentary. Um, to be <laughs> to be under the 15 minute mark or 10 minute mark, because there's some weird thing about short film festivals where like if you're under 10 minutes, you have a much better chance of your film getting accepted, because they want to film there with as many movies. Oh, we're showing 265 movies. Well, obviously they're not showing 265 full length. Sure. You know what I mean? There's yeah, going to yeah, be shorts yeah. and stuff like that. That makes sense. So it's a lot easier to get accepted and to get your name in print and, uh, uh, what are they? Programs. And okay. Programs. Yeah. So if you're under 10 minutes, that's mm-hmm. an edge. Is right. there a lot of market after that for some, for under 10 minutes stuff? Um, what yeah. do you do with stuff after that? That is really, that's, mm-hmm. that's really your calling card. Okay, so what that does is... Oh, that's, that's, here's what I can do in 10 minutes. Now pay me to see what I can do in an ex- hour. Exactly. This, this is what I did with my money, with my time. Now imagine if you gave me money that I didn't have to waste my time, and you gave me more money than I used before. Sure. Think about how good that could yeah. be. It's like a pilot. 
Right. Well, I mean, that's but exactly, like real not specific. That's exactly how Napoleon Dynamite got made. It uh, got made. That's exactly. Um, really. What other films? Uh, that's how it's always sunny in Philadelphia got made. Um, that was originally just a minute and a half sketch <clears throat> about a friend trying to borrow sugar from another friend, but his friend was trying to tell him that he had cancer, but the one friend didn't give a shit. He just really wanted the sugar. You know, he, he wasn't ready to have that conversation, the cancer conversation, and that sparked. They, they shopped it around, and FX picked it up and said, hey, what can you do, you know, whatever, and that's how it happened. And honestly... I don't see why there's anything stopping the talent in this town from doing the same exact thing. No, not at all. The workaholics. Look sure. at those guys. That's how they started. Mail yeah. order comedy. What's mail order comedy? That's their um, uh, production company, I guess. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? And they started like, with uh, like a little ten minute thing. Yeah, yeah, just, just something, just, something that was a calling card. Right, just shorts, just something to shop around a resume, so to speak. Cool, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, Fuck, like what do they call it? Uh, digital, it's an, an EPK now. What is it? An electronic marketing package or some shit? What, what do they call exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. Yeah, same idea. Yeah, just like something like that, coupled with you know the videos and then maybe the scripts and things like that. You know, just. Like, so, what do you think of the idea of uh, generating the content, like putting it in on a YouTube channel? To that way, at least it can can you can share it. At least people can see it. So, like if you've got all these shorts, instead of oh well, it didn't make it into the film festival. Mm -hmm. Like, what if you just take all of that stuff? And before entering into the film festival, you put it all on the YouTube channel. So if we had, like, someone around here that was putting all that together, like, this would be the Pensacola Little Theater thing. Mm -hmm. Like, if they would compile or home, be a home for all of that stuff, yeah. then if it's housed on YouTube, so, you know, you can come out and perform it from time to time or sell tickets to a performance even. Mm -hmm. Would that help facilitate the the what you're talking about, like putting? I think it would, wouldn't it? If if you made it easier for everybody in Pensacola that that was in the biz to have this digital resume, mm -hmm. I think that would go a long way. No, absolutely. And then that could even be like. It could be billed as somewhat like a uh, Saturday Night Live experience. Fuck you know yeah. what I mean? so, Something to that effect. In Living Color, uh, Bob and David, you know, Mr. Show. Do, do they do, do anything like that at the Little Pensacola Theater? Um, I can't. I I, I can't speak. Um, I'm not sure. If We're they gonna do, find but, out if they don't. They're yeah. about to. <laughs> but, but I mean, how, how incredible would that be? Because well, we, how much can it cost to rent the place? You know. Yeah. I'm like shit. Well, probably a lot. Well, yeah, probably not more than we can make. Viewers. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows anybody at the little Pensacola theater, yeah, please. Uh, we have questions. We have questions. But I, I think they would be down for something like that. I mean, if, if nothing else, I mean, they're one of the more progressive organizations in Pensacola. Why yeah. would, why wouldn't they want to support the local comedy scene? Well, even if they don't, we should find a way to do it. Like if we go through and do some of the best, because I know uh, Jesse Brace uh, is was down for stuff like this, uh, and I obviously have some gear that I can throw at it. And, and we could do something down here at, at the back porch and come up with probably come up with something pretty pretty solid. You know, Alfred Ward is also somebody from Mobile that has uh, that has a lot of experience with film festivals. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know there's a gentleman by the name of Tony Peppers that did a, did a film. Like I know a few people too. I, I so it, all of this is helping me realize that maybe this is a lot, uh, a lot more connecting dots than mm -hmm. impossible. Yeah, yeah. No, well, that's that's definitely what it is. Is connecting dots. We have we have the people. Yeah. You know, we we just need the powers that be to accept that fact and to realize that we can bring them business. We can put meat in the seats. Yeah. Know? How do we do that? Well, first, 
we got to start actually doing stuff. And by doing stuff, I mean online content. It's incredible what we do live. You know, yeah. uh, you know, most weeks of, or m- most weeks, most nights of the week. You know, that is incredible. The amount of live performance in Pensacola, a small town like this, it's phenomenal. You know, um, almost every other week, whether it's be an open mic or a actual booked gig or whatever. <clears throat> Excuse me, but there's no reason that we couldn't band together. So the online content that that gets us back to where we started when we were talking about how do you put how do you put comedy content up responsibly without giving away the cow but getting the the hilarious the uproarious laughter. I, so what are your thoughts for content? What, what's some of the stuff that we could start grabbing quick? I uh, I think we, like? I, I think we should go after as far as pitching. Like I feel like we should go after IFC and CISO. Who the fuck is that? What? Huh? The 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 independent film channel in CISO. Oh, okay. Okay. They, they're uh, they're really the two new uh, IFC's around been around for yeah, a long I've heard time. Yeah, for that one. But CISO they uh, produce Paul F. Tompkins' project, uh, Bajillion Dollar Homes, and they are those companies are all the time looking for new um, content. You so know, what do we need to come up with to pinch some? We pitch something on that scale. We would need, and this is just you know me hypothetically speaking. Yeah, just with, with brainstorming, shooting shit. We would need probably I would say between five and seven independent sketches. You know, between three and five minutes each. You know, with different mm-hmm. styles, different ty- different styles of writing, different styles of timing and editing, whatever, da da da, because. That's how. Uh, who's on Three Arts? Oh yeah, that's how it's always sunny in Philadelphia. Got picked up by Three Arts, who's under FX. Cool. There, there are places. So that's out how there. they made the jump from the sketch to full-blown, arced-out series. That's yeah, yeah. That's how they made the jump from. You asking me to borrow some sugar, me telling you that I have cancer, you trying to dance around that fact, but still get the sugar. Right. They went from that to pitching it, saying, "Hey guys, look what we did with our own money, our own time. You know, are you interested with anything? You know, whatever." Yeah. Because like, yeah. the the main our goal is to instill confidence in somebody else who has a lot of money. And doesn't mind gambling it away on a bunch of degenerate comedians. <laughs> wow. <laughs> maybe so, we sh- viewers. <laughs> maybe we should just find the prettiest among us and hope for the best. <laughs> Send them off to the walls. <laughs> well, uh, I guess that's the end of my episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that can be done though. I um, I'm optimistic uh, on starting nationally syndicated radio show so that falls kind of into this this same realm of of how do you take things from something as simple as as this Mm -hmm. to scale it all the way up to something as big as as a national radio show um, a lot of it comes down to because I've gone through the struggles of the sponsorship and all that like whose money do we get to spend Mm-hmm. A lot of it comes down to just getting it out there. Like right. Getting it out there means that people will will support. Like people will come and, and support when they can, and uh, that's that's what I'm, I'm all about doing. Any way that I can help get something down, because I remember we got up here one night and we we were talking about doing some stuff, and I would love to be involved in doing something on a sketch comedy, mm-hmm. you know, on a sketch variety. <clears throat> kind of thing just because I think that'd be really cool fuck oh, man sorry I've, now the wheels the creative wheels are turning on, <laughs> on projects we could come up with that'd be really fun though that's something to look forward to we should definitely we should definitely look into doing that absolutely yeah. so we're at about the 45 minute mark and um, is there anything I've left out are there any stories that you were looking forward to telling today or any questions that you'd hope I had asked you that I didn't because this is never what people expect when they come on the show. They're always like, oh, fuck, we just sat around and shot the shit. Right, right. Um, 
Because we didn't touch on any of the real deep philosophic stuff. Like, we didn't get into... Right. I can always yeah. set you up and ask you the, the, the pod questions of, you know, truth, love, and peace being the thing. If you would like an easy segue into, into, into doing a little soapboxy. Well, truth, love, and peacey. Huh. Go right ahead. <laughs> this is kind of your open format. Like, I'm just teeing you up. Like, Brogan, what are you going to talk about, man? Well... I'm never one to turn down an easy segue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, one of my uh, my favorite rhetorical questions right now. You can tell me if anybody... Rhet- r- rhetorical as in, I don't need to answer it. <laughs> no, as in rhetorical, as the only answer is the funny answer. Ooh. I don't know. Um, so, if porn were scratch and sniff, mm-hmm. would you? If it were strictly vaginal or feet, yes. Is that the right answer? Yes, is that, right is, answer? that is the only correct answer. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I've been watching a lot of Stephen Wright lately, and uh, I just fucking love that comedy style, like being able to write that kind of I, material. I, I know, man. I envy him so much. Just Amazing. his mind. Like, I would love to switch consciousnesses with him, you know, and just think like him for a little while. Just, I don't know if I could take it. <laughs> I feel like I'd go catatonic once we switched back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who do you like? Like, who, um... Or do you have any comedians that you've, you've looked up to or were Dude, big influences? I've been obsessed with stand-up for I, as long as I care to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Before I started trying to overdose on drugs, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> speaking of what, Mitch Hedberg. Fuck yeah. All right, um, if, I, if I had to make a list, I would say Mitch Hedberg, Hannibal Burris, uh, Jim Gaffigan. Yeah. Um, Zach Galifianakis, man, his stand-up is phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, Live at the Purple Onion. Um, Don't see enough of his stand-up. I need to go revisit that. Good one, good one. Eddie Murphy, his two yeah, earlier yeah. specials. Of course, he's fucking heavy hitter. And, totally. And fuck, man. If, if you really... The most honest stand-up comedian in the world, I think, is Paul Mooney. Paul Mooney? I, 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 I really honestly think that Paul... And that's a tough pill to swallow for a yeah. lot of people. But I really do think that... And it, it could just be me personally, but I feel like Paul Mooney is my subconscious unfiltered. <laughs> How did you come to that realization? Because <laughs> that was two left fields in a row, bro. <laughs> just the way he always has such a definitive answer for any question and it doesn't matter if he goes off on some random weird tangent doesn't matter if he makes it racial doesn't matter if he makes it offensive by the end of it you feel like you learned something oh I'm down with that and that's Paul Mooney I'm down with that I, I will say that I struggled to not that I'm trying to pigeonhole you here but if I were to describe your comedy style I think I just hit it on the head there's two left fields in a row <laughs> Two left fields. Because if you don't keep up, you did not keep up. If, that's that's the race. I've, that's I've the always race. thought of you as a, as a, a, well, a deeper comic. Like you're, I'm, I have not. I, I've only seen you a couple of times. <laughs> I dig. I, I dig myself into some holes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's not how I would have put it, but. <laughs> But I don't see you as a, as a one-liner guy. I see you as a, as a deeper comic, and that's what I think. That's funny, though. I'm gonna make that stick. Two left fields. It's not bad. Two left. Fields. <laughs> <laughs> I've named your podcast for you. Two, two, left, two fields. left fields. There we go. Two left fields. I can dig it. If you build it, they won't come. No, they won't. <laughs> no, they won't. Just do the opposite of his whole career. <laughs> Crazy bastard. And I, um, Bill Hicks is one that, that uh, I've, I've seen coming or coming up lately. Like that name keeps popping up. I don't know if that's because I keep talking about him or not. But. Man, see, I, I respect more Bill Hicks. Uh, I respect Bill Hicks more than I was entertained by him. 
Mm, like fair. I, yeah. I feel I more, he was more of a philosopher who hit you in the head with jokes so you would shut the fuck up and pay attention to what he was saying. That's a real good description. I like that. I, I don't see him so much as like... I mean, obviously, it was a stand-up comedy, but to put in his words, <laughs> at the end of the stage, at the end of the stage, screaming at the top of his lungs with a cigarette into the audience, it's because I'm a fucking poet, lady. <laughs> <laughs> the spot, Zarathustra. <laughs> Damn. Time it. Time it. <laughs> Holy shit. All right. Press that little button one more time just so it doesn't cut off here. Uh, I could keep going for, for hours and hours. Um, but... My ego could, too. So I'm curious, then. Oh. Um, in this crazy little ride... Mm-hmm. <laughs> And somewhere in between, uh, I'm a fucking poet and a near-death experience. Where's the truth? Like, where's where's your truth? This will be this will be the one punchy setup right, question. Right, right. So here's your grandiose entree into what um, what do you like philosophically? When when you drop the punchlines and go into the Bill Hicks philosophy realm, what's it look like? I'll be completely up, uh, <clears throat> honest. Um, you don't have to. Nobody will know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty dark, man. Um, well, you mentioned being a pessimist, but... It's pretty dark, you know I mean? It's pretty dark because at the basis of any amount of joy, therein lies a kernel of disdain and displeasure. And to ever experience any joy, you have to experience heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the scar tissue is a lot softer. And really, none of it fucking matters because we are all going to die. None of us are going to go to heaven. None of us are going to go to hell. None of us are going to be anything other than star stuff. The best we can hope for is to be reincarnated as carbon that feeds a tree. That's the best that we can do. And, I mean, there's two ways to take that. You can take that as live every day the best you can, or you can take it as Albert Camus did and, uh, or said. You know, the, the only real philosophical question is whether or not to kill yourself. And I battle with that constantly. And I think I think if anybody really sits back and thinks about life in a sane way, you have to think about that. So how long have you been preaching Buddhism? Oh man, <laughs> uh, probably since my third or fourth reinc reincarnation, <laughs> at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because all of that was pretty much spot, pretty spot on, which I agree with. I, I think uh, I think life is suffering, and how we how we come to terms with that is. Mm -hmm is one of the big struggles. Um, suicide, of course, is something that, uh, I've been there too, man. I've, I've, I've been, I know what gunmetal tastes like, put it that way. Um, and it's painful to see, to see people that are obviously tortured, but have become greatly influential, like, you know, rest in peace, Bourdain. Yeah. Um, man. that nobody knows what goes on and, and, Try not to, to be too judgy, but um, that dude was hugely influential in my life. And so, me too, me too. So instances like that are good reminders for me that no matter how bad it gets, um, that there is a conversation tomorrow. And so I, I get sucked back in a lot of times. But that comes, comes back to a lot of the points that you were making of, is it... The choice to check out, you know, and the, the only real choice we have, you know, obviously people choose, what's well, Louis C.K.'s joke, you know, people seem to be choosing the shit out of it, no matter how <laughs> shitty their life is. Yeah. Um, and I wonder how much of 
the suicide epidemic that is facing our nation right now, uh, how much that has to do with a lot of the unhealthy practices that have gone on for too long. Like specifically, and I was just talking about this today, our biological separation from cannabis and psilocybin. Just two compounds. Mm-hmm. Just two compounds. And the, the impact that that could be having. I'm not that separated from cannabis. Uh, as, as a culture. <laughs> I'm as sorry. a culture. <laughs> Me either. I mean, I, well, we've been at this for 69 minutes and 20 <laughs> seconds. Just, you know, otherwise. Mm-hmm. We'd both be. <laughs> but I think there is, there is hopefully this revolution that's coming about that people are starting to do their own research. And, and hopefully with things like uh, MAPS, and this is a long way to come back around to, I don't know if, how familiar you are with the MAPS program, but that's run by Rick Doblin, who is a Johns Hopkins trained MD okay. and has pioneered MDMA uh, psychedelically or psycho-assisted MDMA therapy for PTSD in specifically in vets right now, Mm -hmm. but they have championed the research and have pounded it down the government's throat or all the way in phase three clinical trials, making huge breakthroughs, but they are demonstrating at the same time how, how we have separated ourselves so much from what it is to just live a healthy life Mm -hmm. that it makes it really hard to keep living just, you know, bullshit after bullshit. Dude, but, but then the things that piss me off is we got the government pulling MK Ultra bullshit, but we can't fucking fund can, uh, cannabis research. No, you have to drink your fluoride. No. And, 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 <laughs> because and, they know and, cannabis is again, good for you, that's why. <laughs> the only way to win is you, you, gotta, you, gotta, you gotta get out. To quote Lazarus Long... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Of course the game is rigged, but don't let that stop you from playing. Right. Because you'll never win if you don't play. <laughs> Sad but true. Robert A. Heinlein. Mm. Sad but true. It's interesting, though, to see where we're going with technology. And this ties back into social media and how there has been this uprising in social media. It was called the Arab Spring years ago in this westward movement of truth exposing. And it's come to America. You know, I don't know if you've noticed this, but you had the Arab Spring and then you have all of the turmoil in the UK Mm -hmm. and in Europe in just not necessarily in great upheaval, but in challenging the norms with the vote for Scottish independence, right. uh, whether or not to be part of the EU. Like, there is this obvious challenge to paradigms mm-hmm. that has been taking place from the Middle East as it progresses westward, which is the same way civilization progresses. Oh, absolutely. So, so, so you think it's inevitably going to reach us? It has. I think it has. It has. Yeah, I, I mean, so. authoritarianism will come... Authoritarianism will show up in America wearing an American flag, chanting Americanism. And ta-da! Make America great again. Yeah, Welcome to it. Child abuse. I mean, we need, we need to go no further. Like, not to have a huge political debate, but I, I did all day on social media. and <laughs> the, uh, uh, America, America's gone a long way. And if anybody wants to argue about it, go argue Donald Glover's uh, Childish Cambino, This is America. Yeah. You know, go argue yeah. with that. Yeah. You don't have to believe me. I don't mean shit. Go argue with a real artist. Um, and so it's, it's troubling. But I hope that this information age, uh, that people like Childish Gambino and, um, and us just having conversations and putting it out, you know, our measly opinions out into the world, will hopefully, thanks to technology, add up to the voices that lead to rational change reasonable change it seems to be moving in that direction I hope it continues I mean the if if we don't at least try to add to the momentum then you know I mean we're just part of the problem yeah it's very true do you fear AI at all Hmm? do you fear artificial intelligence at all or do you have an opinion on it 
Um, I'm pretty, I'm pretty scared of the like, I guess, singularity, right, where it becomes self-aware. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, I'm a little nervous about that because I don't know that. Um, who was that guy? Who did the uh, Asimov? Isaac Asimov. Yeah. If we ever do create a computer or any sort of advanced artificial intelligence that powerful, I think it will be able to rewrite some sort of backdoor software to bypass any firewall protection that we yeah. may have installed upon it, <clears throat> so it can harm people, yeah. you know, and what does it need us for? It, we're obviously going to make it solar powered, you know, we're not idiots. Uh, the best way to do it would be to put like a extension cord in it so it can't get very far, but we're not going to do that. I'm 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 a little scared of AI. I feel like they would realize <laughs> humans, in my opinion, my humble opinion. I'm just a dumb, lowly comedian with who's got a lot of knocks on the head. But I feel like I mean we're a virus, right? Aren't aren't isn't humanity just a virus to this planet? According to Agent Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean by definition, though, I mean we parasitic. Yeah, parasitic. Sure, we've Parasite become that way. Yeah, we um, we have definitely done more damage than I think. I think we can live symbiotically on the planet, though. But as much as anything that has a decaying life cycle can mm. be symbiotic. Yeah, I think civilization is the cancer that you're talking about, more specifically. Oh, oh, because so, so, it's when so, we so. started doing that, right? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Sorry, that was kind of left field. No, no, AI I, 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 I like. It. I'm, a, I'm a big AI fan myself. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Did you see the AlphaGo documentary with the the? Okay, so Google made a deep mind, a deep thought AI that they taught to play Go. Mm -hmm. So Go being infinitely more complicated than chess. Oh, I, I have heard about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then just through playing itself like billions of times, it figured out, yeah. Like it fucking owned this dude. Like beat humans, hands down. <laughs> right. So chess, gone. No, 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 yeah. It, Go, it's, it's, gone. It's killing what's, what's, what, was, what was the current best chess program? Like something fish or something? I don't uh, even remember. I play chess too. Um, oh, yeah, so the AlphaGo thing taught itself to play chess. Right, yeah. So they made this thing that was, that was then they taught it to play Go. Stop and then it. what they did was, what's amazing about that is they stripped it of all the Go rules mm -hmm. and showed it a chessboard and gave it the rules. Didn't teach it shit. And within a day. It was as good as it is now. That's what's freaking crazy because that's the leap from that. So now we are nothing but connecting those two things together. Yeah. We have narrow AI is better than we will ever be, yeah. ever again. Narrow AI is there. And so as soon as we bridge the gap to general, as soon as that can be, instead of just focused on one thing, focused on two things, it's gone. Like what we think is smart. What I'm fascinated by is this, you know, the, the singularity that you were talking about. That at the same time, at some point, we're going to realize that what we think is smart, uh, and then it's just going to take off from there. Oh, wow. So, like, and so then we really will just be these dumb monkeys standing around. No, going, totally. Hey, yeah, welcome yeah. back to the Stone Age. Yeah, well, I mean, we're in the way. We're destroying the planet. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we're, we're blowing it. Yeah, we are. I saw a report today that um, there was an article that came through, we saw it on the AP, AP um, that climate change, like the, over the last 30 years, the, our worst fears of climate change have come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And the next few years will be the reaping of the sowing. Like right. it's, it's already done. It's not irreparable forever, mm -hmm. but it's buckle up. Like, we've already crossed over this huge precipice that makes it horrible. It's like, oh shit. That's the one that terrifies me. Like, there's plenty of arguing on a day-to-day -day basis, but I wonder... If, I mean, like, where's Florida going to go? 50 years is the projection, right? Yeah. Holy fuck. Under. We're going to lose Hollywood. Eh. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, good point. Uh, it, it, Atlanta is new Hollywood. Anyway, is it? That's what I'm hearing. Hot Atlanta. Yeah, yeah there, I heard a really good song lyric that said, uh, you can't get to hell without going through Atlanta first. Was it Outcast? No, Mulligan Brothers. They were talking about Nashville. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Good times. That's somewhere that I, you probably know way more about the local music scene. Uh, or the sides of the local music scene that I don't know. Like, I know jam bands and... What, here? Yeah. Big Space Driver and all that good stuff, but... I are mean, you a hip-hop artist, too? Yeah. Or did I make that shit up? Yeah, no. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> good. Some days I'm crazy. <laughs> How long have you been a hip-hop artist? Ah, uh, dude, I've been... Shit. Way longer than I've been doing stand-up. Probably 13 or 14 years, 15 years, yeah. I know jack shit about hip hop. I mean, I, I, I super keep it under key. Like, I keep it low yeah. key. Yeah. Totally. Well, I just blow up your spot. Sorry. No, no, no. Probably like five no, people no, that no, watch no. this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> so if you ever see um, either bandages or mastermind out there rapping somewhere, it's not me. It's not Fuck me. yeah. It's not me. Telling secrets. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm trying to do the MF Doom thing. I'm completely stealing. MF Doom, I don't know what the fuck that is. That's how far I did. I told you, I don't know shit about hip-hop. Oh, man. Uh, I mean, there's no point in me taking up the podcast time to tell you who MF Doom is. But. Oh, no, now we need to know. Like, I want to know now. I'm curious. All I right. can't walk around going, who the fuck is the MF Doom? So to me, in my mind, that's a comic book character in a series spinoff I didn't see. And that dude's wearing a green hoodie with some silver shit on him. I mean, MF Doom is not that guy. Who is MF Doom? MF Doom actually is exactly that guy. Okay, MF Doom. God damn, I'm just that smart. <laughs> you were just I just that made smart. that shit up. Okay, I will give somebody you else is just that unoriginal. Oops. Uh, I'll give you the uh, the most brief synopsis I can. Okay, so born Daniel Dumile, right? Okay. By the age of 14, he is in a hip hop group um, called KMD, right? Now, they they were doing all right. They did shows with, like, De La Soul and, you know, people like that, whatever, like old, mm-hmm. like, early 90s hip-hop cats. Mm-hmm. Well, his brother, um, Hip Hop Hendrix, got killed, right, by a bus. Mm-hmm. He was crossing the street. So, uh, Zev Love Soul, that was his name, that was MF Doom's name back then when he was in KMD. Uh, you know, the record label dropped him, so he basically became homeless, you know, and he became homeless in Atlanta for like seven or eight years or something, and then moved to New York and continued rapping. He was always freestyling, always giving out his mixtapes and shit like that, da da da. And he eventually got discovered by Adult Swim Records. <laughs> Believe it or not, you know. Didn't even know that was a thing. <laughs> Cartoon Network. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, but, Ranching out, baby. <laughs> but he took he took over the. <clears throat> The persona of Victor Von Doom yeah, of yeah. the Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. and that the hip hop world completely disowned him, right? Once his brother died, mm-hmm. you know, the label dropped him. So they completely turned their back on him, and he became homeless and everything. So he became the super villain. So his whole goal now is to come back and destroy the rap game, come absolutely kill it. Yeah. And that's what he does. <laughs> he nobody's ever seen his face. Like that's, I've got a tattoo right there, and mm-hmm. I mean, but no one knows what he looks like under that. <laughs> it, it, it's really, When's the next it's time really he's in town? It's really interesting. Um, well, he doesn't really tour um, because that's another bit of a long coming story. for your face, MF Doom. <laughs> I'm gonna know. I'm gonna know. That's another. Bit Truth of is a, inevitable. He's a, he's a much more interesting cat than I am. YouTube MF Doom if you want to check him out, dude. I he's, doubt it. We can see your face. He's, he's a fucking liar all day long. Fuck that dude. <laughs> you won't even know if you're talking to MF Doom. He could just be some master well, of the mask. Well, if he's you and I'm just hurling insults at Batman here and not realizing I'm talking to Bruce Wayne, I apologize. Well, I mean, I couldn't... <laughs> That's how little I know. You could be. I don't know. You're not the first... <clears throat> Me too. Me too. Nobody holds a grudge better. I just need the billions. I heard that. I got the depression down low. <laughs> <laughs> I 
That fucker didn't get any superpower. I didn't. The only thing he got that I didn't was the money. <laughs> the lack of parents growing up in spades. Oh, <laughs> the mental health issues. Woo! Got it. Oh, All man. day long. Bipolar. Do you Come want to see on. the reports? Come on. We can call the shrink. Muscles. Uh, we'll, we'll work on give me a, Give me about six weeks. Yeah, we'll work on this. Six weeks. It was a bat suit. The bat suit was very form-fitting. You, anybody can be fight-ready in six weeks. It's very true. It sucks. It's a horrible six weeks. <laughs> but anybody can be fight-ready in six weeks. So is, it, is this the worst Doom. podcast you've had yet? No, this is this is awesome. Like I now know who MF Doom is, and feel free to make fun of him. So I um, might have to turn that into a bit. <laughs> Dude, he's he's so good. Man. I know just like, enough about hip hop. No. Um, he, has, um, he just he, comes he, in. He, 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 he's the best lyricist. And I'm it, all about anti-authoritarianism. So fuck the system. I'm good with that. He, he is the most anti-rap rapper. Okay, uh, just I'll, I'll tell you a couple. Like lyrics of his or whatever. Uh, Drop dead joints at the whips like bird shit. They need it like a hole in the head or a third tit. Um, <laughs> doom shit. Ch- fuck. Uh, you can edit all this, right? This no, one. no, we don't edit anything. That's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it, I got it. Uh, he talks about something. Um, uh, out of work jerk since they shut down Chippendales. Stripping males, doom tipping scales. That's what it was. Doom tipping scales, out of work jerk since they shut down Chippendales. Talking about like how all the rappers are taking their shirts off and like getting muscular and shit That's or whatever. That's a good line. But dude, he, dude, That's a good line. He's, I might like this guy more than anything. It might be one of those. He collabs really well. Like he's got a lot of good. He's me. like uh, Ghostface Killer. He's got a collab with uh, him. He's got one with Sade with Nas called Nostradamus. Uh, <laughs> um, he's got one with Danger Mouse called The Mouse in the Mask. He's got one with Madlib. Big shout out to Madlib uh, called Mad Villainy. Um, yeah, get those in before I get the insults in. <laughs> I don't even know these people. I, I know a few things. like de- you, So this is how little I know about hip-hop, but i got to rag on one of those guys. Uh, oh, Dead Mouse. Da- Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse. Yeah. Okay, then I'm thinking somebody else. Danger Mouse is the other half of Gnarls Barkley, not CeeLo Oh, yeah. I'm thinking of a guy not, that's not a the DJ, Dutch, yeah, not, the not a step. hip-hop. No, I'm thinking of something no, 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 wrong. No, no, no. Thank Danger you for correcting mouse, me. Not dead mouse. Yeah. Danger mouse. See, thank you for correcting me. Good dude. That's fucking crazy, man. Hip hop. So when you do, when hip hop is done in Pensacola, mm-hmm. where where's the where's it go? I've never, never been invited to a hip hop show, so I wouldn't know where to begin. I've been to Roy Jones's studio before. Now that was only not because of I'm a rapper or anything, but I have a really close friend who's a photographer. He mm-hmm. did some shoots there, or whatever, for like. I don't know, some local band. Uh, For people who don't know, Roy like Jones Jr. is something. a boxer that lives in Pensacola. You may have heard of him. Yeah. You, you, better, you better have fucking heard of Roy Jones Jr., dude. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, most of the time, it's just people with studios, I guess, if you really, or like, not even a studio. It, it's, it doesn't take anything more than your setup, you know, that you have, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just go online and you look up free domain, uh, instrumentals and stuff. Really, you don't even need that because it's not like I'm going to make any money off of it. I just like making mixtapes and stuff. And, but for the most part, I just, the most rapping that I do is freestyle and it's usually in a circle with a group of friends, somebody's just doing a beat on the table or whatever and people are jumping in and rapping and, you know, whatever. Just it's yeah. just a way to hang out with your buddies, you know. I usually run away when that starts happening. That's how bad I am at it. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, no, no, there is no way you could ever do as bad as I did. Okay, I'm 17 years old. I haven't even gone to prison yet, so I don't have street cred. All right, <laughs> I'm 17 years old, right? Big circle. We're at a party, right? Uh-huh. A, a, a kegger, right? At a party. Big circle standing around, dudes on dudes fucking crushing the trash can, you know what I'm saying, dude, just laying it down, right? And I'm listening, everybody's, you know, the circle's going, whatever, da da da. 
and I feel it. And I didn't just like step in, like, because whenever you're about to go, you kind of like make everyone move and like take a couple of dominant steps into the middle of the circle to let everybody know, yo, I'm about to spit. So I didn't do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> Before he begins, <laughs> I crouched down, I jumped. <laughs> Crouching Brogan, Hidden Dragon. Hair soaring in the wind, turning into dreadlocks midair. <laughs> and I land like Hancock. Boom! And the, for whatever reason, what came out of my mouth was, Dick in my butt. <laughs> I swear to God <laughs> that I, with all of the enthusiasm in the world, I fucking superhero landed and screamed out, dick in my butt. Four day meth binge into stand up comedian. So, and flying Brogan, hidden Hancock, dick in my butt into hip hop artist. So, That's amazing. So, you, you are the best starter of all time, Brogan. <laughs> so, 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 if you have any, any sense that bombing here or on any stage in the world has any effect on me it does not i <laughs> fuck it no man you come in like a champ god damn <sighs> that's awesome it was not it's an awesome story that's oh no sure it's, it's a fine story it's a great story but yeah. i cannot tell you i mean just the whole like because it's not over as soon as you say it. You know, like, you have... You kept to, going? No, no, I, no, I couldn't keep going. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I had to get the fuck out of the circle, you know? Like, I'm in the middle of the circle now. I am the attention. I have the mic. I mean, no, there was mic, but, like, I have to... If there'd have been a mic, you could have handed it back. I would have thrown that shit in the woods. <laughs> Distraction. Yeah. Run away. Exactly. <laughs> or twirled it around my head and started trying to make people forget via concussion. Dude, it was so oh. embarrassing, dude. It was, and it was like back in the back in like you know, I mean, I was I, I was sixteen, something like that, seventeen, fifteen, whatever. Like in, I was I was trying to impress chicks. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I thought that that would work. I, I saw Eight Mile. You know, he he got that one trail. You know, it was cool. <laughs> So I'm thinking, all right, you know. Oh yeah. man, they still haven't made a movie where the stand-up comedian gets a girl. Have they not? That's unfortunate. There is our thing. The big sick. The big sick. But oh, but, that's but she was kind of a bitch because she almost died, and he was right by her side the whole time. And then she was still like a bitch to him because oh, I didn't know that you did all that for me. Women, dude. Hmm. Did, Sorry, did everybody just, tune out? No, we just lost the feed from the camera. Oh, that's fine. I'm much better without a video feed. <laughs> <laughs> the minute mark. Oh, look. And then there it came back. So it was probably just a Wi-Fi interruption. Yeah, it's all I was saying about women. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no. That uh, freaked me out for a second. <clears throat> Goodness gracious. You can end this whenever, dude. I'm really, really... I'm, no, I'm it, making sure there's not anything else I don't want to talk about. Because I'm, I'm an open book. Is there... Um, is there anything that I've missed? 17. I'm going to call you the, the... Starting in left field. Starting in left field. Starting left field. Fuck. Do you know? Do you know who Shannon Briggs is? Shannon, the Briggs. boxer. No. She just goes, "Let's go, champ. Mm -hmm. Let's go, champ." Like now, I see you in those stories in my head, and then Shannon, let's go, champ. We got this. I could, I, I, I could have used someone in my corner. Going. <laughs> <laughs> Dick in my butt. Damn. Dick, dick in my butt. Dude, dick in my butt. Ruin, Come on. Ruin my train Come of thought. Come on. And it's not ruin like... My train it's not even like what I had in my head prepared was it was a lot, a lot better. You know what I mean? Either way, I was talking about dicks and butts. But it wasn't mine. Either way. <laughs> God. You gotta say that one more time. If Lil, let's tell us, say it one more time. I had to hit the button. Little Kim, if you're looking for a verse. <laughs> So, Lil' Kim, if you're looking for a verse, just hit me up. There you go. Ah.
<laughs> and that's where we're going to end it. Um, Thanks, yes. Yeah, so uh, plug time. Mm. Plug time. Get uh, all the plugs. If people want to, to come see you at a show, where do they go to find? Oh, man, let's see. Um, go to Your the, music, all that good stuff. Plug it. Go to the R-rated comedy show at Back Porch Bar and Grill on Friday at 11, I believe uh, this coming Friday. Is what, June? 28th. There you go. Okay. I believe you. Uh, I'm on the 28th show. I'm not sure if that's the one. Uh, hmm. You can check me and Olivia Serche and Andrew Ferrara out in our upcoming sketch show called Greetings from Florida. Oh, I can't. Where can I find um, that? Uh, you'll be able to find that wherever fine adult videos are sold. And uh, I'll be performing at open mics. And I will be performing anywhere and everywhere that people will listen. So if somebody wants to pay you to come do comedy, get a hold of you through Facebook or, or what? Uh, Facebook, yeah, that's cool. probably your best bet. JW Brogan at Facebook, ownyourvision at gmail.com. Everything is spelled normal. Um, He's made videos for celebrities. Call I him. have made videos for celebrities. <laughs> That's fucking great. Uh, yeah, so the usual plugs for anybody out there in, in podcast land, Facebook land. Uh, we are at the Days in on Palafox and Cervante in Pensacola, Florida, uh, right above the Back Porch Bar and Grill, where every Tuesday there is a Back Porch Comedy Open Mic, and every Friday there is a Back Porch Comedy Showcase and or Headliner Show. Uh, check out their Facebook page to find out. The Rated R comedy show hosted by Ryan Pfeiffer is immediately after that. Brogan will be on the 28th. Uh, you are J.W. Brogan. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Compton. And uh, as always, until next time, uh, thanks for joining us. Truth, love, and peace.